going to have a look at another simple state diagram. This time I've set myself up with some of the diagrams I need to start with. Suppose we've got a fragment of class diagram that looks a bit like this. We've got a class called copy and a class called book. This is starting to be familiar yet. And they're associated in this way. Oh, there's a point I need to talk about here, isn't there? So we've got multiplicities on our association. It says that every book object is associated with one or many, could be any number, of copy objects. I've decided to exclude zero. Every book is going to be associated with at least one copy object. Every copy object is associated with exactly one book, the one it's a copy of. And I've given them an attribute like that and a couple of methods and a couple of methods here so that they can keep themselves in sync for reasons which will become clear. Now suppose we want to draw a state diagram for our copy class. Okay. Well, the copy can obviously be in two states. It can be on the shelf or it can be on loan. And notice, this is not an accident, that those correspond exactly to the two possible values of, it, of its Boolean attribute. Okay. Let's suppose it's going to be initially created in the on-the-shelf state. How can it move into the on into the on loan state? Well, it's going to do that if it receives a certain event, and the event is going to be the event of somebody sending it the borrow message. So we record that like this on top of the arrow. Okay, and similarly, it can get transitioned in the other direction when somebody sends it the return message. So far, so good. Nice protocol state machine. Give that to somebody. Say, your object's going to start off in the on-the-shelf state, and then you have to send it borrow and return alternately. Basically, it's not going to work to send it the borrow message when it's already on loan. It's not going to work to send it the return message when it's already on the shelf. And so our protocol state machine doesn't show anything in particular happening when that would happen. It's a violation of precondition. We don't know what would happen. So it would be a bug. Okay. Now, we might want to capture, say, that we couldn't move the object from the on-the-shelf state to the on-loan state if it was reserved. And if we wanted to do that, we would do it in a condition like this square brackets with a condition that has to hold for the transition to be taken inside it. Now this one here is just in, purely in English, I'm, I'm supposing, and that's actually very common. You can use OCL, which we'll meet later in the course, but for now let's just suppose these conditions are going to be written in English. And also notice that our class diagram is going to need updated for that because we've got nothing about reservations in at the moment, but we're doing design, that's okay. So far, this is still a protocol state machine. But what I want to do now is to show you the step that takes us into behavioral state machine land, which is to say we're now also going to record what the copy should actually do when it receives these messages. What should the content of its implementation of the borrow operation or the return operation be? Well, let's suppose that if the copy receives the borrow message to indicate that this copy is being borrowed, it's supposed to inform its corresponding book that it has been borrowed by sending the book the message borrowed with itself as argument. We can indicate that by using an oblique stroke like that, a referent for the object that we're sending the message to. In this case, it's going to be book. It's book by reference to the association in the class. It's just the lowercase version of the class that's mentioned there. If we had an association end name there, we could use that instead. But the lowercase version of the class name always works. What message are we sending to this book object we just named? We're sending it the borrowed message with ourself, this very copy, as an argument. And similarly, we can do book dot returned self. Okay. So this is now a behavioral state machine. It's closer to implementation than a protocol state machine. It's more likely to be useful to you as the designer of this class and less likely to be useful to somebody who's just trying to understand how to use the thing. Um, two big differences. In a behavioral state machine, you can show actions like this. You don't have to. 
and you probably won't want to do so on every transition, and you certainly won't want to show every detail of what the method implement implementation should do. But you can show particularly important actions like this. Uh, the other big difference is there now must be uh, clearly defined, at least in your head, um, notion of really what it is in the object zone terms for it to be in this state. Okay. The states of a state diagram are splitting up the total state space that an object of this class could possibly have. What's the total state space that an object could have? Well, if you think about all its attributes and all its links and all the values they could possibly take, then each combination of those values gives you, in principle, a state that an object could have. Some of them might be illegal, but that's, we'll let that go for now. You don't need, of course, to record each of those separately because in, in most cases, many or all of them are going to be kind of qualitatively the same. But where there's an important qualitative difference, you split up all those states into two different classes. So in this case, all we care about is, is this Boolean attribute true, in which case it's going to be in that state, or false, in which case it's going to be in that state.